Uh, thank you very much. It's also my pleasure to be here. And I will start with a small anecdote. You know, all these guys around me are the real president. In Bosnia, we don't have a president. We have a presidency. So, and there are three members. So I am just one third of the, of the real president. And this is a little bit my disadvantage in these discussions. Uh, when the Francis, Pope Francis came to Sarajevo, Typically, there is always a tete-a-tete -tete meeting, which means two persons, four eyes. In Bosnian case, that means eight eyes, because three members. And the uh, uh, Pope asked us, how do you function? I said, OK, from time to time, if you disagree, we put it aside. We don't want to poison the public with that. We will wait for some time to agree. But in the, a lot of cases, we agree. And we don't speak about the disadvantages. He said, like marriage, it looks very nice from outside. Inside, we know how it looks. I said, how do you know about the marriage? Oh, I know more than you believe, that, than, than you know. And when I said that we agree, he said, after a minute, then you three are the real evidence that the Holy Trinity is possible. <laughs> and there is a part of the truth in that, which means if you have a normal people ready to make compromises. Nothing depends on the legal system. Even in a very complicated legal system, normal personalities will always find solution. But if you have crazy people, even the most theoretically idealistic system cannot create stability. The crazy people will always find a way to create the problems. And that's the trick for the Bosnia and Herzegovina how to function. We need politicians ready to understand the others, ready to understand the other goals, and ready to make compromises. Do we have that politicians? Unfortunately, not, still not. Do we have a chance to have them? I don't see still them in the, in the horizon, but I really believe that it is possible. Bosnian system is not complicated, not more complicated than a Swiss. And they have even more complicated system than we in reality, but it's functioning because they accepted the rules and everything there. So I'm coming to the point of what does it mean international community, international cooperation in Bosnia? I have to say that my feeling is that Bosnia is one of the last successful cases of the international intervention. If you see the Bosnia today and compare the Bosnia 25 years ago, it's a completely different situation. It's not a perfect, but it's stable. Can we find any example of that around the world? Where it was better than in the case of Bosnia, speaking about the international intervention. I didn't see anywhere. What's the explanation for that? First, what is very significant, maybe the most significant part is all the international community was united. This is the last case where the Russia, United States, European Union were together. And there were no sides which had separate support and this unity of international community is extremely significant for the areas where you have a crisis. If, there, if the big powers have their favorite sides, I don't see any way to find a peaceful, peaceful solution. That's my feeling about that. Second reason is the solution was created in a way that there were no winner. You know in the Balkans, if you have a winner, loser will find the second half of the game trying to be a winner again. So it's never-ending story then. In the case of Dayton, it was balanced that no one can say, I am a winner. I won. I've achieved everything what I wanted. Irony is the fact that the international community offered almost the same proposal, which was accepted at the end of the war, before the war. But at that time, first, it was not unity of the international community because it was beginning of the war. Second, local players 
believed we can achieve much more. We can, be, we can achieve maximum. Four years after, same proposal, three percentage of the people was killed, half of the population was displaced internally or being refugees, and the solution was the same like it was more or less the same at the beginning. Why? The sides were tired of the war. But the price was 100,000 people killed, 2 million people displaced and refugees. So, the explanation why, according to my opinion, Bosnia was a relatively successful case of international community are these three, three elements. And, but there is also another side of the coin, mistakes of the international community in Bosnia. It came, let's say, five or six years after the end of the war. Why? We have, you know, the king of Bosnia, which is the high representative. So this is the international community appointed person, which has the full authority to everything what that person wants. Six years after the war, I think that we had one guy, Pedjezdan, uh, who was basically thinking that he wanted to leave monument after him that something he achieved more than expected. So instead of explaining uh, Dayton Agreement, he tried to create a new, I, I think that he had a good will, better Bosnia. And then he decided things which were, which are these days unacceptable everywhere. He started to impose the laws. So the parliament was basically out and then he decided to impose the laws. He decided to dismiss the local politicians. In one day, he decided to eliminate 120 people who were elected in elections by the people, controlled by the international community, these elections, without rights to be employed, without rights to have a bank account, without rights to do anything to receive the money. These days, this is unacceptable anywhere. It's against the human rights, but it was reality in Bosnia. And none of these 120 people were accused in the court. Nothing. It was just a decision of a single person. Why that was possible? Because in the first years after the Dayton, Bosnia was in the headlines. So the prime ministers were involved in that, the ministers of foreign affairs were involved in that, so the high rep at that time had control of the politicians, didn't have unlimited power. Six years after, it was a little bit boring, so the ministers were not interested. It was basically, they, there is this peak, Peace Implementation Council, which is, let's say, control of the high representative. It was left to the at the beginning, political directors. After that, heads of the international cooperation, basically bureaucrats. And bureaucrats, they are just interested that the life will continue without big difficulties. They didn't want to criticize the high rep, and he had unlimited power. And whoever has unlimited power will make mistakes. You cannot have unlimited power, even if you are coming from the democratic society, you will make mistakes. Simply, it's, it's so, so normal. And I, I really believe that this was, that was a mistake. Another mistake was uh, attempt, we at that time agreed that it would be good to have international judges and the prosecutors in Bosnia in order to have two things, corruption and the war crimes. So to have independent you know, judges and the prosecutors who can independently be equal to all sides. Instead of the 20 or 20 good, experienced, real prosecutors from abroad, we had bureaucrats from the OHR being appointed like uh, judges and the prosecutors, and they were never before that, judges or prosecutors. So they were just bureaucrats. So they moved from the high rep to this, and that was a real disaster, and we still 
cannot recover from that. So in order to short, generally my impression is international cooperation is very significant for the countries like Bosnia. Without international cooperation, Bosnia couldn't be in this situation. Generally, I believe it was a positive, but in the second half of the game, a lot of mistakes, and I'm still worried uh, about this existence of the high representative almost 30 years after the, after the war, without the real control, with the, with, the, with the very relatively young bureaucrats from the foreign ministries being control over him, which means that there is no real control. And because of that, I'm a little bit worried about the long-term situation. Internally, um, the, 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 some sort of the precondition for the stability in Bosnia is politicians ready to understand the other side, ready not to achieve the maximum, but just to achieve the logical compromise. Uh, I was the member of the presidency with two very strong politicians from the different other communities, Mr. Bakir Zbegovic and Mr. Dragan Čović. And if I see our period, I have to say our mandate is four years. In first two and a half years, we were quite good. But then coming to the elections, everything was destroyed, basically. There was, in the last six months, no way to make any agreement because of populistic approach, trying to achieve the, the support of the voters, and so that we, had, we were not able to create a compromise. Some of us a little bit more, some of us a little bit less, less responsible. But generally, I really believe, and that's something which is a good international cooperation, understanding of the others is precondition for some sort of the normal, normal stability in, in, in the region and within the complicated countries. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm.